But then I saw the view, and then I thought, ooh. This project celebrates the centenary of the 1919 Addison Act, which enshrined council housing in the UK and promised homes fit for heroes returning from the First World War. These first council homes set a high design standard. However, subsequent low construction quality and poor maintenance undermined public trust. Right to buy saw council tenancies plummet, and abuse of this policy by investors has contributed to a mass shortage of genuinely affordable housing. Now, a century after the Addison Act, it is time to revisit council housing as a solution to the housing crisis. Working in collaboration with local provider Nottingham City Homes, tenants were interviewed across various generations of council estates, including the Victoria Flats, a substantial late 60s high-rise development now reaching the end of its original design life. Ambitious in its conception, the council's vision for the city centre site detracted fantastical bids. The winning proposal by Arthur Swift and Partners promised an open-air, mixed-use megastructure of concrete and glass. However, the subsequent oil crisis resulted in a sorry compromise, a conventional shopping mall and slab block. In the intervening half a century, improvements have been limited to modest facade insulation and replacement windows. My thesis considers a more radical refurbishment and remodelling. Its title, The Invisible Castle, reflects the irony that despite being Nottingham's tallest building, it is its most unknowable. It's invisible. Entrance and exit is invisible. You don't see anybody coming and going. Unseen from most street level vantage points, the 1200 residents remain anonymous behind the mirrored glass monolith, an irony reinforced by the juxtaposition of the social housing atop the commercial shopping centre. You don't see people. So that's a problem. To celebrate the flat's modernist legacy, the design process employs an updated modernist grill at all scales from city to doorknob. Oh, I think we should have a bar. <laughs> I think we should have a pub. At an urban scale, a publicly accessible rooftop park and pub offer a social interface between the resident community and the city. At street scale, horizontal and vertical circulation is reordered to embed street level neighbourliness into the scheme, according to Dunbar's 150 meaningful contacts per commune optimum. What I'd really love here if I had a choice would be a balcony. At house scale, individual homes are remodelled within the existing structural and service system, providing dual aspect living, spatial interest, private outdoor space, and scope for a more varied occupant demographic. The doorknob scale explores tectonic solutions for the retrofit. The aim of the project is not to fetishise post-war high-rise, but to draw attention to the fact that it forms a key part of our deteriorating housing stock with tonnes of embodied carbon. Embracing the RIBA 2030 climate challenge, energy generation is integrated with vertical solar cladding and a shop source heat pump, whilst a rainwater harvesting system irrigates the rooftop park. Winter gardens enclosing the structure serve as a thermal buffer, with plants preconditioning incoming air and reducing city centre noise. Ultimately, this project calls for upgrading the existing urban fabric, ending the stigma around council housing, and creating truly sustainable and affordable homes fit for all. There is a sense of pride, and I don't mind, who knows that I'm a council tenant, they don't like it, so.